guys welcome back I am so glad that you have joined me today all right so we are in our third week of the month and this whole month we have been learning that God is good no matter what now we know we have our little little chant and our motion so remember when I say God is good you are gonna say no matter what are you ready let's practice that all right I think you got pretty good at this by now here we go God is good no matter what. Uh, that was pretty good, but I think you could be louder. All right, I want to hear more excitement. Are you ready? God is good no matter what. <laughs> yes. So as we have been looking at the life of Joseph, we have seen so many things. We saw that God is good no matter what, even when life is unfair, even when, you know, he can turn good into bad. And today we're going to see that he is good no matter what, and he can help us. Now, for our opening activity today, we are going to use our dominoes one more time, but this is probably my favorite thing that you can do with dominoes. We are going to make a domino track. Yes! So this is where you get to be creative and have some fun, and I'm going to get to show you. You're going to take your dominoes, and you're going to line them up on the table, and then you're going to push one, and it's going to topple them all down. All right, so let me get my dominoes out, and let's make some domino tracks. enjoyed those dominoes as much as I did. I love to make tracks, full fun designs, and see them fall over. Maybe it was kind of hard to do, and that's okay, but it's just a fun way to play with dominoes and have some fun with them. Well, this, this kind of activity kind of reminds me of what um, we're going to be talking about today. So the dominoes kind of fell over pretty easy. One fell, the next one fell, the next one fell. So I have a question for you. Has there ever been a time where you have fallen down and you've needed help to get up? Now think about it. Now I, I'm Miss Pam. Okay, let me be honest. I'm pretty klutzy, so I will run into things and drop stuff pretty regularly. I don't normally fall down, but there I remember this one time when I was going snow tubing, which I don't do very often because I don't like to be cold. But anyway, I went snow tubing, it was really cold out there, and apparently the slopes were really, really, really slippery. So really good conditions for snow tubing. Well, I've never been before, and I get up to the top, and I have my tube, and I sit down, and the guy says, okay, you can go, and he says, don't forget to drag your feet. And I went, I didn't know what he was talking about. I was like, what, what, do, you, what do you mean, what, what's going on? So. Really amazing slide, super fast, super fun. I loved it. It was a great slide, and then I got to the end where it flattens off, and I did not stop. Okay, guys, <laughs> I I did not drag my feet because I had forgot what he said, and I just slid right off the edge. But thankfully, for some reason or other, they had this um, like orange construction fence that was kind of up, it looks kind of like it's netting kind of stuff. So my tube, me and my tube, flew right off the edge and right into that fence. And then I just kind of slid down. Guys, I was, it was so bad, but I was stuck. Like, 
<laughs> I know it's me, get this, my tube on top of me, stuck in the snow. It was, it was really funny. You can laugh at me. I was laughing. It was hilarious. I did not get hurt. It was funny, but I got really stuck and they actually had to come help get me out. <laughs> so I, I needed some help when I've fallen down. Now, next time I did drag my feet. So anyway, maybe you have a fun story where you fell down and needed help getting up. Um, but I love sharing with me. So as we're thinking about this needing help, we're going to look at today, our story still in the life of Joseph, where Joseph needed help. Now, a lot of times we kind of do things on our own and we think we can be independent. We're like, ah, I don't need help. I can do this. Well, guys, we, we really can't. We always need God's help and God is always going to be there. And we're going to get to see that through Joseph's story. So before we get into that, though, we're going to sing. So stand on up and let's worship through song together. <laughs> Yeah. 
All right, guys, let's do a real quick review, recap of Joseph's life so far. So we know that his brothers have, had sold him into slavery. You know, at first they had planned to kill him, but then he was taken to Egypt far from his home, where a man named Potiphar bought him as a slave. But God was with Joseph and caused him to have success in whatever he did. So Potiphar made him in charge of his entire household, so of the servants and everything that went on there. Well, Potiphar's wife told a lie about Joseph, said that he had done something that he hadn't done, and Potiphar believed his wife, and so because of that, he had Joseph thrown into prison, again, for something he hadn't done. But God was still with Joseph, because even in prison, whatever he did, he was successful at. And so the, the prison guard, the head guy that was in charge of prison, actually put Joseph in charge of other prisoners and things there, um, because he saw that God was with him. And so that's where Joseph is at now. He's at the he's still in prison, but he is kind of in charge and helping out there. Well, when Joseph is in prison, we are going to pick up from that story. So if you have your Bibles, get into Genesis, and we are going to be in chapter 40 and chapter 41. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's pretty long, but I am going to read a couple verses here and there. So if you have it, you can follow along with me. So, Joseph is there and he's in prison. Well, one day there were some new prisoners that came to the prison. There was the Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh, he was, he was the king. He was the ruler of Egypt. Um, look at this guy. Well, his cupbearer and his baker had done something that upset him and they were thrown into prison. Now, the cupbearer was a really important job, okay? So, he, what he would do is he would always taste... Um, the drink and the food that are being brought to the Pharaoh, okay? Because even though the Pharaoh is super powerful, not everybody liked him, and, and they wanted to make sure that nobody was trying to poison him, so the cupbearer was a really trusted person. He would taste um, the Pharaoh's food before the Pharaoh had it just to make sure that it was safe. And then the baker, obviously, he was the chief baker. He made all kinds of yummy things, whatever. For any reason, these two were thrown into prison. Okay? And they were in, Joseph was kind of in charge of them, taking care of them. Well, one day he saw them and he realized that something was like really, really bothering them. They were troubled. So he went and he asked them, okay, we're going to look in Genesis chapter 40 and then we're going to start in verse 5. And one night, this is talking about the cupbearer and the baker, one night they both dreamed and the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt who were confined in the prison, each his own dream and each dream with its own interpretation. Or its own meaning. 
When Joseph came to them in the morning, he saw that they were troubled. So he asked Pharaoh's officers, who were with him in custody in the master's house, Why are your faces downcast today? They said to him, We have had dreams, and there is no one to interpret them. And Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Please tell them to me. All right, so we know we talked about this before, how dreams in that time had some meaning, okay? They didn't have the Bible back then, so you sometimes dreams were a way that God used to um, communicate a message, okay? So both of these men, the cupbearer and the baker, had this strange dream, but they had no idea what it meant, so they were really kind of worried about it. And so Joseph asked them, hey, you know, what's going on? And they told him, we have these dreams, we don't know what they mean. And he said, tell me your dreams, because this interpretation belongs to God, and maybe I can tell you what it is. Now, he didn't say, Joseph just said, hey, well, I'm good at interpreting dreams. I've had them before. No, he said God would help him. And sure enough, God did. So the cupbearer said, okay, this was my dream. So I was there, and there were three big branches of grapes that grew in front of me. And I took the grapes, and I squeezed it into that grape juice into the king's cup, and I took it to the king or to the pharaoh. Okay? And he said, what in the world does that mean? Well, with God's help, Joseph was able to interpret the meaning of the dream. He said the three branches stand for three days. And that in three days, the Pharaoh is going to restore you or let you come back to your old job. He's going to get you out of prison. <gasps> Yay! The cover is so exciting. He's like, man, I hope that does happen. Well, Joseph asked, he said, hey, please, when this happens, please don't forget about me. Remember that I am here. I am far from home. I've done nothing wrong. Please remember me. Maybe get me out of here. All right. So after the baker heard that, he's like, oh, sweet. This is a good dream. I'm going to tell him I. All right. So the baker goes, okay, just my dream. In my dream, I had three baskets full of bread and I was wearing them on my head. Well, all of a sudden, as I had these basket bread, birds came and started eating the bread out of the baskets. Now, you you guys know Miss Pam, I don't like birds, so that would be a total nightmare. Birds, coming bread, mm. anyway. So, back to our baker. So, three baskets on his head full of bread and the birds ate it. What does it mean? Well, Joseph was really sad to tell him that the three baskets also mean three days. But in three days, Pharaoh is going to have you killed and the birds are going to eat your flesh. That's what it says, guys. And they're like, oh, that's not good. Well, in three days, sure enough, both of those dreams came true. Exactly what the dreams had meant, what Joseph had interpreted, happened. And the cupbearer, when he went back to the Pharaoh, I wish I could tell you that he said, oh, Joseph, he, would, he helped me know my dream. It was great and helped him get out of prison. But he didn't. Actually, we see that it was actually two years later before the cupbearer even remembered Joseph. But again, God was with him. God is good no matter what, and he's still with Joseph. Well, one night, so two years after that, Joseph is still in prison, the Pharaoh actually has a dream. So he has this dream, and he wakes up and is really bothering him. So he called all of his, his wise men, his scholars, his magicians, those who could interpret dreams, and he called them all, and he told them about his dream. And he told them all about it, and he goes, okay, what does it mean? Well, nobody could tell the Pharaoh what his dream meant. Maybe they had before been able to, but they couldn't tell him. <gasps> and then the cupbearer remembered. He goes, oh, I remember, you remember Joseph. And he told the Pharaoh, he goes, when I was in prison two years ago, I had a dream and this Hebrew, this man was able to interpret it. And exactly what he said came to, came to happen. And so the Pharaoh said, all right, I need to, I need this guy. So they went, they got Joseph out of prison. He changed his clothes, got it cleaned up, you know, because he's going to go see the Pharaoh. This king is a big deal. So he's there and he comes in to the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh tells him this dream. And he says, okay, here's, here's my dream, Joseph. I dreamed that there were seven really plump, really fat, really good looking cows and they were eating grass next to the river. They came out of the room and they were just eating. But then came seven really thin, scrawny, sickly looking cows. They came out of the river and then they ate the seven good looking cows. Oh, what's going on there? He goes, and then I had this other dream that there were seven grains of these seven stalks of grain. Okay, like this, this is grain, that's kind of like what cereals made out of and bread and flowers. He goes, so there were seven 
full, beautiful, plump um, ears of uh, sheets of grain. And then there rose seven really sick and wimpy like sheets of grain. And then they ate the good ones. Okay. So he's like, Joseph, what in the world does this mean? What we see in, if I'm a spot, just for nine. So then Joseph says, <clears throat> and he didn't say, oh, I can tell you the truth, because God will help me. And he says, and it is I told Pharaoh, God has shown to Pharaoh what he is about to do. Okay, so he's telling him, he goes, hey, God is telling you what's about to happen. That's what your dream means. There will come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. But after then, there will arise seven years of famine. And all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. The famine will consume the land. Okay, so he's saying that both of these dreams mean the same thing. That there are going to be seven years where there is going to be more than enough food. Crops are going to go really well. Everything's going to be plenty in the land. But then after those seven years of having plenty, there's going to be seven years of famine. Where maybe it's not going to rain. Food is not going to grow. People are going to starve. So that's, that is what Joseph said, that's, that God is telling you what's going to happen. And what you need to do is you need to prepare for this. Since he's told you this, you need to find someone who is wise and smart and who can oversee this. During those seven years of plenty and lots of things, we need to be saving food so that we're ready for the seven years of famine. So not only just interpret the dream, he told him, like, hey, this is, this is what you need to do with it. Well, we see in verse 39, let me throw that here, it says, He's like, we got to choose a man. And then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has shown you all this, there is none so discerning and wise as you are. You shall be over my house and all my people shall order themselves as you command. Only as regards the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, see, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. So the Pharaoh said, Joseph, you are going to be that man. You interpreted this dream, and there's no one as wise as you, and no God that could, God is with you, and he is going to be with you, so I want you to be in charge of everything. So Joseph became the second in command. The only one more powerful was Pharaoh himself. Guys, what a plan. God had taken Joseph, who was sold into slavery, who was thrown into prison, and is now second in command in Egypt. And he is able, during those seven years we look through, he's able to save a lot of food. Because just like the dreams had said, there were going to come seven years of famine. During this time, we can read through this chapter that Joseph got married and he had two sons. And he, was, he just felt the Lord's blessing that in everything he did, God helped him. Now at the very end of chapter 41, we're going to see in verse 55. Five, sorry, verse 55. All right. So after all those seven years of really, really good um, crops and food, this is what happened. When all the land of Egypt was famished, okay, this is the seven years now, there's all this famine. The people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, go to Joseph, what he says to you do. So when the famine had spread over all the land, Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians, for the famine was severe in the land of Egypt. So they had the food to sell to the people who were hungry and needed it. Moreover, all the earth came to Egypt to Joseph to buy grain because the famine was severe over all the earth. Guys, this was a horrible famine. But guys, God had a plan and he was with Joseph so that because of Joseph, they were able to save this food and that millions and thousands of people would not starve to death. God had a plan all through this. Joseph trusted God and knew that God was good no matter what. Now, we see that this famine now is going on. It's over the entire world at this time. So people from all over are coming to Egypt to find food. Now, we've got one more week. We're going to learn a little bit more about Joseph. This is not the end of his story. God is still working. Now, guys, I want you to think about, remember this story, that God is good no matter what, and he will be there to help you. Just like he was there to help Joseph interpret these dreams, he's going to be there to help you. Whether you need to talk to somebody and have a hard conversation or do hard things, God is going to be there with you. So please don't forget this week. Remember that and remember that God is good no matter what. All right, guys, time for us to practice our memory verse for this month. So here it is. If you know it already, you can just say it with me. Are you ready? Here we go. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. Nahum 1.7.
Now, if you want to add some motions to this to help you remember it, you can maybe put it to song, have some fun with it. But we want to practice this verse because it's so good. When we are in trouble, we need to remember this verse that the Lord is with us. He's a strong refuge when trouble comes. All right. Now let's watch our Bible video about a Mac, and then we will uh, I'll introduce a game for us to practice and play today. Your friend Mac is back, and I've got something to tell you. You probably didn't know this, but we rhinos have poor eyesight. I want you to know so if I'm walking down the street and I don't wave at you, you'll know why. It's not that I don't like you, it's that I probably didn't see you. Out here on the plains in Eastern and Southern Africa, not being able to see well isn't all that big of a deal. There's not much to run into. It would probably be a different story where you live. Some scientists say we rhinos can't see anything more than 15 feet in front of us. I'm not sure exactly how far I can see, but it's not far. Then everything gets fuzzy, I'll show you. Do you see that tree over there? You're seeing it like most people see it. But if you were a rhino, yep, it'd be that fuzzy. But God helped us out by giving us rhinos a great sense of smell. I may not see you coming, but I probably smell you coming. My super sniffer helps me know if something or someone is hanging around. And I can hear well too. So if you crack your knuckles, or cough, or hiccup, I'll hear you. God was good to us rhinos when he gave us the ability to sniff out danger and hear it coming. It'll help us stay safe. In the Bible, book of Nahum, chapter 1, verse 7, it says, The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. And boy, is that true. Trouble? For me, bugs are trouble. You may think my thick skin is pretty tough, but it's actually kind of sensitive. I hate it when those bugs bite. God gave me these good friends called oxpecker birds. They hang out on my back, eating the bugs that bug me. Hey, thanks guys! In the Bible, God helped a man named Joseph. He didn't send him birds to sit on his back. But he did help Joseph know what people's dreams meant. You can read about it in the book of Genesis in the Bible. It's a real dreamy adventure. And you can see for yourself how God helps you. Just look around. When you're looking at a bully, or you don't do so well on a surprise test, remember that God is good no matter what. And God will help you. Talk to him. He's never far away. But it's time for my mud bath, so I guess I'll be seeing ya. That's all for now. This is Mac, saying over and out. Hi guys, I love hearing all these fun facts about our Bible. Bible buddy animals. Well, let's jump into our game for today. So if you have your snowballs that we used last week, okay, we're going to need this today. If you don't have them, don't freak out. You can make some. Find some white paper, find something um, round that you can trace, make a few circles, write the words on them, and you can make your own snowballs. So have your snowballs that have all the words. Now take them. Once you take them, I want you to crumble it up so you get a little small supposed to look like a snowball, kind of looks more like popcorn, but it works. So take all your pieces, you're going to ball them up, nothing fancy, just ball them all up, uh, come on there, and then you have some fun part. Now you might need another friend for this, maybe you have brother, sister, mom, and dad, grandma, grandpa, somebody you can have, and you can have a snowball fight! <laughs> yeah! Just throw the snowballs, have some fun with it. Once you've had your fun snowball fight, however long you want to do it, collect all your snowballs and then you can open them back up and practice saying your verse. Or what you can do, you can have some fun. You can, if you have your two sets, you can throw them and then try to match them back up. You can, once you take all of your um, snowballs, line them up, practice 
practice saying the verse, you can crumble back it up and have another snowball fight. Woo! Yeah, you just have some fun because who doesn't want to have a snowball fight? But practice saying the verse, have some fun with it. Maybe time yourself, see how fast you can put them together. Have some fun. Let's practice saying the verse one more time before we close through the day. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. Nahum 1, 7. All right, we got one more week for this verse and for this month. So if you know your verse already and you can say it without any helps all by yourself, take a video of it, send it to me, or you can tell it to me in person and so that I can get you a special prize for saying the verse. All right, friends, I love you. I'm so glad that you joined me today. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you again soon.